Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Very excited today as we are finally diving into the new Beauty List and Chikohoto Holiday 2018 brush set. Unfortunately, this collaboration date has been postponed. Beauty List did not anticipate the number of pre-orders that went down including my own and they want to confirm a delivery date from chikohoto to ensure that they'll have enough brushes for everyone when they do release that date so hang on tight i found out that information from sonia's makeup blog sweet makeup temptations if you want to take a visit i'll link that blog post down below so you could check the details on that situation without further ado if you want to see the new brush set and a demo then please keep on watching hello friends welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here my name is Alicia for all my returning subscribers thanks for stopping by this is kinky sweat a platform where I share all things movement and beauty you'll find all my movement adventures on my Instagram as well as you know things here and there and in between you like my nails in honor of showing the beauty list and chikohoro brush set yes the nails are blue this is from the kale polish winter season collection to the stars it's like a really nice metallic blue man i mean look at that shine mm. i tried these brushes yesterday and i have clips of them clean so don't get too anxious okay i wanted to try them first because i mean i did a first impressions on my holiday a Wayne Goss brush and because that was one brush I had less to focus on so I felt like I could get away with that first impressions But because it's four brushes I just wanted to do my face and experience the brushes Take down my observations and deliver those to you guys during the demo. Here's the box that the brushes came in It's white with the Chikohoto lettering on here as well as uh, I think maybe symbols as well, Japanese symbols here on the box. When you open it, now you get the brushes and they come in this pearlized finish brush holder flap. It's nice, it's not super sturdy, and I feel it's something I won't use simply because I have my brush holder. The one brush set that I'm considering still getting, I feel like I'm gonna have regret if I don't get it, is the holiday collection from 2000, from last year? Is it the Sakura, the 2017? That brush holder looks fly, and I feel like I could actually use that, and I'm not even into brush rolls like that. But that one looks nice. And the brushes look nice too, so I'm considering it. I keep it around, you know, just in case. And just so you see what the brushes came in. It has as the inserts here for the handles. And then it just goes over the bristles like so. But the thing is, this is not lined with plastic or anything. So the makeup from the brushes might get on this material. So just be wary of that. In the box, you get a how to care for your new brushes card that I think is kindly provided by Beautylish and when you flip to the other side it shows you how you take daily care of your brushes it says here to simply wipe the brush gently on a tissue to release any remaining powder or makeup that's it for daily care gentle washing dip brush into lukewarm water with a bit of mild soap then wipe clean on a tissue i usually use my microfiber towel and hang bristles bristle down to dry wash occasionally no more than once a month and always avoid water near the ferrule i think this is a chikohoto certificate of authenticity maybe just to kind of indicate you have the company phone number on here, the website, and information that I, I wish I could read. I wish I could speak Japanese, for sure. Now you also have the makeup brush guy that's also provided with the package. And when you open it, it's divided into the different uh, brushes and what you can use them for. Now, first up, we have the powder brush. And here's a clip of it, totally clean, a close-up of the handle. And on the handle, you have Mount Fuji, which is, I mean, a location that I feel, I mean, I wish I could visit. It's just gorgeous. The detailing on the handle is outrageous. And the blue hue, the metallic blue hue of the handle, like it really just takes you in. It's, I mean, simply gorgeous. Next up, you have the cheek brush. Here's a close up too of the brush clean, how it moves across the skin. Handle still with the same design, slightly smaller. And despite how luxurious these feel, they're quite lightweight. And I feel that's very much ideal for traveling. Next up, you have the foundation brush, which is what I was most excited about because I love small kabuki brushes and flat top as well. Wider handle, short, which I feel makes for greater control. And yeah, man, this is soft. 
And lastly, we have our small shader brush, which I think likens to a MAC 217, uh, even a Wayne Gloss number six from his anniversary two set. And because it has been packaged in plastic, it still needs some time to fluff out. And when it does, I feel it will be more, even more so of a better blending brush. Just so you know what's up. We got a little bit of taking care of to do. Listen, there's no more picking in 2019. I can't help myself, friends. I see something and I just want to like, hello, are you going to focus on me? But I always remind myself when I do pick, this is what happens. I mean, this is long gone, but see, there's a mark and I have all these little uh, brown spots lingering from my messing around so liz my bow's out of frame so that's good news it won't make you angry so let's start with the foundation yeah because i want you to see this little guy in action yesterday i used my ColourPop no filter stick foundation so that's what we're going to do today going in with the shade medium dark 145 i'm also going to finesse it with a little bit of the hourglass vanish stick foundation in the shade honey so we're going to lay down the color pop First, make sure to get these little ooh, ooh, ooh. and then in with the hourglass honey shade, which looks a little lighter on camera, but I'm gonna put it more to the center of my face. Skin has already been prepped with my morning skin routine. The last thing I applied was my squalene rose oil and vitamin c i just press it on top of my moisturizer now we're gonna take our beautylish and chikuhoro foundation brush and go to town ideally when using a small kabuki brush like this i like to place the product on my skin first so it doesn't pull up too much product away from my face and i like small brushes you saw my favorite brush for 2018 was the zoeva 110 face shape i just feel it gives you better control now in terms of this brush despite it being a flat top it's still very soft it doesn't feel stabby across the skin whatsoever and i just feel it works the product gorgeously into the skin and it doesn't absorb a whole lot it might absorb a lot of my concealer which is what happened yesterday and i'll show you that again today when i apply the concealer under my eyes so probably not ideal to blend on my concealer with i'll just use another brush for that no problem but look how beautifully that blends the product into the skin it doesn't look textured it works it in it doesn't leave a cakey finish and it feels soft incredibly soft i feel like i could do my little punchy motions downward punchy motions and my skin won't react to that and i understand the smaller brush head is going to because of that it's going to take more time to blend out your foundation and if you're a rush then yes maybe this shape is not ideal for your lifestyle for your timeline but i prefer a smaller kabuki brush head simply because again i feel it gives you more precise application and it just works the product better into the skin now keep in mind these are natural bristles and they are hand bundled so because of that you will get a little shedding on the first couple of uses until you wash it and then all the loose the loosey goosey bristles will work their way out and you won't experience shedding thereafter i could even go close under my eyes if i wanted to just with the foundation hello you're gonna focus on me so whatever bristles you find just take them away no big deal and how we're looking that skin is looking nice all right just so you can see i'm going to apply concealer and use the brush right now i am testing out the new makeup forever ultra hd light capturing self-setting concealer i stopped over the pro store hey ruben he helped me out choose my shade this is shade 34 i also have shade what is this 41 which is more to my skin tone and i actually can use it under my eyes so probably use a little bit of both going in th though with the 34 i'm gonna place that under the eyes very creamy still using it still you know expensive experiencing it and it is indeed self-setting i go in with powder anyway because if i want this to last all day i just need to take that extra reinforcement so here i go with the brush i do feel well maybe not so bad i don't think it eats away too much product but i rather use just a smaller brush or one that's more domed shaped 
just so I feel because it fits better under my eye. But that's not bad. I feel it blended the concealer very quickly and also blended very well with the uh, foundation on the skin. But the concealer itself is just ultra smooth and very creamy and very easy to blend. So that I feel also is a attribute from the concealer formula itself if you want let's go in with a different brush like for instance i'm gonna use my zoeva face shape on this side just so you can see the difference and i feel be see how fast that blended out i do feel the kabuki from the beautylish chikohoto set eats up a little more product maybe did I, maybe I just put more on this side, but you see this side looks brighter than this side, right? Probably wouldn't use the Chikuhoto brush to blend out my concealer because if you want coverage under your eyes, then use another brush. So I'm going to put a little more here on this side and I'm going to use our Zoeva brush. And also keep in mind the Zoeva is synthetic. Typically synthetic bristles don't absorb product as much as natural bristles do. Skin is looking good, man. I love it. Yes. Now to set, we'll go in with the cheek brush that can be used for several things. I mean, this is ideal for under eye setting. Also ideal for contouring, highlighter, blush, even setting the rest of your face if you prefer to use a smaller brush. With that, going in with the Milk Makeup Loose Setting Powder in the shade Lights. Before that, make sure we do a little rub-a-dub-dub on our towel to release the foundation from these bristles. We wanna make sure we keep them light and fresh. Gonna tap in and go with the powder. I would say this is like a, a slightly bigger Wayne Goss number two. If you want to put them side by side, the Chiku Hodo definitely has more of a point, and the Wayne is a little more dome shaped, still tapered, but a little more rounder at the top. And you can clearly see the Chiku Hodo brush is a little bigger. This, I mean, this brush is soft. I'll double check, but these bristles are Psycho Goat Hair, which is probably one of the softest types of goat hair out there I'm gonna go on, on this side oh my goodness it's just like marvelous the way this fits right it's because of the tapered tip look how ideal that shape is for the under eye I'm gonna take it down the bridge of the nose as well as around the nostrils here around the chin and center of the forehead oh I just love how this feels God. When I felt these brushes initially when I got them right out of the package, I mean, I laughed. Especially when I felt the powder brush. I was like this. I was like, uh-uh. What? Ooh, and I love how my skin feels. I love how diffused it looks. Despite us applying powder, I feel the skin still looks uh, lightweight and not overly made up. I now, you know what, I want to get a little experimental with the powder brush. Now, I love the size and shape of this brush. I feel because it's slightly tapered and domed, it just makes it ideal not only for loose powder or even pressed powder application, but bronzer application, even blush. And because the bristles are not so tightly packed, it's going to yield a more diffused look, which I think is ideal for people who like a lighter, sheer finish of makeup and don't like to cake it on. This is definitely going to give you more diffused finish in contrast to maybe like the Sonia G, which is going to pack on a little more color. Or if you want to use a denser brush to get on more color, because yesterday my makeup was my face makeup that is was a lot lighter in nature it just didn't feel as saturated as sometimes it usually ends up when I use my other brushes so it's not a good thing or a bad thing it's just a preference right if you like lighter washes of color and you feel that every time you apply bronzer it just looks too heavy even your contour if it looks too heavy this is going to adjust that just fine what I would like to do I don't have my I'm just gonna use my veil. I The medium milk is in my bathroom, so that's fine. I'm gonna go in with the hourglass veil on my face. So I'm just gonna take what's in the lid with the powder brush. I'm gonna go in on this side. Oh, this, look, look how it moves. You see that? The cheek brush as well was doing the exact same thing. The agility and overall movement performance of this brush is simply divine and it distributes the right amount of product i mean my face is set 
Here's the finger test. It glides, it feels velvety. I don't feel any stickiness whatsoever. So this powder brush gets the loose powder down fast, man. And it spreads quickly. It doesn't, I feel like it doesn't apply it unevenly whatsoever. For this side, I'm gonna use my pressed powder. And with that, going in with my Pro Pan HD Pro Finish powders. Going in with shade number 168. I'm gonna give it a little swirl. I'm actually mixing 168 and one. 63 together oh that feels amazing i love how this this powder brush is just divine oh my heavens i could do this all day i mean all day but more importantly i love how it gets the product down on the skin fast and around the skin fast for sure if you really wanted to let's say if you wanted to use this foundation brush because you could use this with cream and powder to apply your contour let's just say for kicks going in with the makeup forever artist color powder in the shade s116 i believe we're gonna use this and just press that onto the cheekbone love this well that's looking nice despite me punching this in the way that i am it still looks pretty diffused don't you think i mean that's not bad if we wanted to diffuse it further then we'll take the cheek brush and look how look how beautifully this moves across the skin as well we just further blend it out no problem if we wanted to use this brush to apply the contour we apply it in the same way or i should say in the same spot clearly not the same way that looks great friends and we put on two servings of the contour and it's not looking too heavy just yet now for the bronzer I'm going to now use my powder brush just so you can see that in action with the bronzer from Anastasia. Using the Anastasia bronzer in the shade Rich Amber. I'm gonna use that and get that onto the skin. You see what I mean? It's just a lighter wash of color. Let's say just for kicks, Sonia G. I feel this just laid on more product than this side. This definitely has a more diffused finish. And again, it really all depends on how you want your makeup to look like in the end. I think this is a gorgeous brush to use if you're not comfortable applying bronzer, if you feel that it always looks muddy or it's just too much you put on there. This is a perfect brush to apply bronzer with for that light diffused effect. If we wanted to, we could take the tip of the cheek brush with the bronzer and just lightly graze down the sides of the nose. I rarely do this, but listen, the brush does it for me. I'm doing it. And that's, I feel like, a perfect placement of color. It doesn't look too harsh. It doesn't look too crazy. For a highlight, I'm actually going to use my Givenchy. Just see how that goes. I used Makeup Forever yesterday, so let's see how this fares with the Chikohoto brush. Oh my gosh, so many mirrors. Hello. Well, that's perfect. Ooh, I love this too because you could apply it as well in a circular buffing motion. And again, because how tapered it is, it's ideal for the cheekbone. I mean, beyond ideal. And then just over the brow a little bit. That's just perfect. Oh, my heavens. Down the bridge of the nose a little bit. Just this is an ideal brush for highlighters simply because it's not gonna lay down so much at once so you can build up the intensity of your highlight. If you want it to be soft, then one application is fine. If you want more, you just go in, but each time it's just gonna look brighter and brighter and not textured. Let's just say spritz with a little mix this plus first. Go in with the highlighter again and just see how that goes with it slightly wet oh my gosh and then i take the foundation brush and just punch in whatever i feel needs a little extra blending that looks divine i mean look at my skin you guys come on i'm dying and again have your tissue on standby a microfiber towel on standby to release the color each time if you're switching from product to from shade uh formula what have you now for some blush definitely going in with honey thief let's check out the honey thief with the cheek brush oh well that's just easy you could punch it on and then you can start buffing about love 
All right, I'm going to apply these eyebrows and I'll be right back. Along with eyebrows, I started my eye look because I wanted to show you the Chikuhoto and Beautylish eye brush. And we are using the Dominique Cosmetics Berries and Cream eyeshadow palette, which I've been loving. I've been using it all of last week and let me tell you, used all the colors. If you want a review and demo on that, let me know down below. I applied Soft and Sweet in the crease with my Wayne Goss, which one is this? Number three. Now I wanna go in with the uh, shadow brush. And again, because it's still tightly packed, I feel still has some fluff potential. I'm gonna go in with Bittersweet, and I'm just gonna use the brush to first pack on the color. And I'm gonna turn it on its side and start to work the color into the crease. I think it does a fantastic job of not only packing on the mat, but also blending it out as well. I'm also taking the same color, same brush, and working that under the lash line. This, I feel, is ideal for this purpose because if it's right under the lash line but it's not so fluffy that it gets too diffused especially if you don't like a overly diffused lower lash line using my number three just to smooth out the edges because in the end i just like to go in with a bigger crease brush to help refine the blending but i think that looks great man to check out a deeper color let's now go in with cherry juice same brush but i'm gonna be very careful because since this is a deeper shade I don't want it to get out of hand, so I'm placing it there first with the very tip of the brush and I'm using padding motions to see where the color is placed. Again, turning the brush on its side to now diffuse it into the crease. I'm using very light pressure and I actually like the short handle on this brush. I just feel I'm closer to my eye. I have a little more control. If you want it, you could use the tip of the brush to maybe shape the V a little bit, and then from there, work it into the crease. Taking Cherry Juice, same brush, sure, but now on the outer portion of my lower lash line. Feathering out the very sharp V we, we did. Again, turning it on its side, so we could just get a little more blend here in the crease. I like this brush, man. It's very multifunctional. Yes, it's not your typical tapered blending crease brush, but I feel because it's so soft and because of its shape, you can use it to place color and also to blend out, which is super. Like despite it being flat, because again, it's not super fluffed out, it still moves the color around exceptionally well and I feel makes for precise placement. If you wanted, we could place cherry juice on the inner portion of our lid. Well, this shape is ideal for this part of my eye, man. This is a super soft brush. I still can't get over it. It feels incredible on the lids. It doesn't feel scratchy at all. And I love how it glides across the skin and I love how it moves the product. I mean, that's a really beautiful blend. I'm gonna put a little more here on this eye because I feel we just need to even it out. But like I said, if you feel the need to go in with a fluffier brush, then go ahead. Like in the end, it's about preference and what you prefer to use. To see how this does with metallic shades, I'm gonna go in now with Honey Dipped and I'm gonna wiggle the brush in the pan. <laughs> Weird angle. I'm gonna wiggle it in so we can get the product into the bristles, like so. And I'm gonna place that on the lid. Now, I find that this doesn't really lay on metallics well it could be also the formula right i feel this metallic formula is a little dry and definitely better if applied wet i'm going to take more on the brush hit it with some max fix plus and punch that onto the lid And of course, I went a little too high. Always happens on this eye i'm gonna do a little white white go in with bittersweet the second violet shade we apply and i'm just using the very tip of the brush to help clean up that metallic application that went a little too high so yeah it definitely works well uh well this formula in particular works well when applied wet 
I'm not sure if I used it with another metallic that it would apply better. So that is just something I have to experiment with and I will report back for sure. Or if you have the set, what have your experiences been when using this eyeshadow brush with metallics because i think that's gorgeous but again i think this is more of an eyeshadow formula thing than a brush taking now cranberry with the tip of the brush but i'm going to place that right on the inner third of my lower lash line i'm taking the makeup forever highlighter artist color powder still with the tip of the brush but now to the inner corner Oh, I like how that applies my inner corner highlight. It's like a nice wash of highlight. It doesn't look too crazy, which I like sometimes. I mean, I could do a bold inner corner, okay? Sometimes, you know, if it's bold on the lid and everywhere else, it's just, you know, low-key on the inner corners. Wonderful, why not? Let's put the same Makeup Forever highlighter, but to the brow bone. And just for funsies, I wanted to pop on a little bit of glitter on the lid. I mean, this is totally not necessary, but... And this does not have anything to do with the Chikohoto brush set, but just, you know, don't mind me. I'm taking my Makeup Forever silicone applicator with the Glitterly, upset, glitterly, glitterly Obsessed from ColourPop in Dream About Me. I'm gonna put that right over the metallic shade we did. Oh, well that's fun. Now with the shade Avenue of the Stars, I'm taking the side of the silicone applicator and perhaps, maybe, putting that here, wrong side, like right on the inner part of the lash line. Oh, that's fun. We like that. I love this applicator. Just makes it very easy. Put on this glitter. All right, friends, I'm gonna pop on some mascara and I'll be right back. Makeup is done, lips are on. What do you think, friends, from that demo? I mean, I used these yesterday, I used them today, and I am still blown away. I've never tried Chikohoto brushes. This is my first time. I, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video. I was so excited. I have a list of brushes that I'm looking to eventually purchase from Chikohoto. I got them, or no, it's Hakuhoto. Hakuhoto, I have a list for Hakuhoto. Please let me know your recommendations for both Chikohoto and Hakuhoto. I am dying to try them extensively. I definitely wanna try at least one complexion brush, uh, maybe a few eye brushes, and whatever else you think I need to get my hands on. From these four alone, I mean, I cannot get over how much of my makeup I did. I mean, I did my whole face practically. I dipped out perhaps just for my transition shade for the eye look and the glitter application. But other than that, we used the foundation brush for our foundation stick. We used, we did dip out. I'm so sorry, the Zoeva. The Zoeva, the Zoeva, the Zoeva, where are you? We used this to apply concealer on this eye because I, I feel feel from using this yesterday as well and I observed the same thing that the Chikohoto foundation brush eats up a little more product because it is natural bristles and the Zoeva is synthetic. That's just something standard in the industry concerning brushes. Synthetic is not going to absorb as much product. It's going to keep the product on the face but I feel that's more helpful if you're looking for some product to be taken away. That's another reason why a lot of people love to use beauty blunders is that it's gonna give you more of a natural skin-like finish with the natural hairs versus the synthetic. If you want more coverage on the under eye, then yes, go in with a synthetic brush or what have you. Not that this finish on the side was bad, but if you're looking to tackle uh, under eye circles or discoloration that needs to go, then definitely use a brush that's going to leave more product on the skin. I think this was exceptional for the foundation. I just loved how my skin looked. Despite as much foundation stick stuff we put on my face, I felt my skin didn't look heavy, it looked smooth, and the coverage was perfect. I love how short the handle is, and I just think it yields, again, better control. Just an overall outstanding experience with the application. The cheek brush, I mean, multifunctional, and I know, Wayne, I know, I didn't forget about you. I mean, these are two differently shaped brushes. They're gonna just provide a different experience in terms of application, of feel. This is a more traditional shape I feel people are used to using and seeing in terms of using this brush for highlighter, bronzer, contour, even all over powdering. I absolutely love the shape of this brush. Again, it's more tapered than my Wayne Goss number two. I feel it just fits 
perfectly under my eye and the tip of the brush just gets right under the lash line and it doesn't feel rough it doesn't feel stabby it just feels soft and velvety and silky i mean the feel of these brushes are just i can't get over it still can't get over it i love how this applied my blush loved how it applied the highlight you saw apply it like this like this or like this several ways you could go in with this brush in terms of how you want your highlight to look how you want the finish to look you know just there are some things that we just don't want to stop doing and this is one of them this is a fluid brush and i actually went to uh, Sonia's blog because she breaks down each brush she does comparisons with other holiday brushes that were released in the past she does compare this to the Noelle set I forgot it's either Nige or Noelle Sonia does mention how this is more loosely packed and therefore just yields a more sheer finish more diffused look which is great I mean the way this applies loose powder all over my face even pressed powder I love how it applied my bronzer I just think it gave it an exceptional exceptionally beautiful diffused look and this brush is just it's soft oh my goodness now this is more densely packed so this is going to apply a lot more product i feel if you're not used to flat top powder brushes because this did my this did win best 2018 powder brush because that's what i felt like if you're more accustomed to dome taper types of powder brushes i mean this is just even if you wanted to apply your powder like this you can make that happen too that like i no, i'm gonna stop talking i love it simple as that i love how this applied the contour and exceptional for a cream contour if you go that route cream liquid anything i would recommend before you go in with liquid that you do put it on the back of your hand first and just work the product onto the bristles first just so you have a little more control with placement and application if you wanted to apply maybe a, you want to use concealer for your contour or you do a makeup stick with your contour i typically just like to put the makeup on the back of my hand first because i just feel it yields a more sheer finish and doesn't look as intense but that's just me you do what you want brush head is just perfectly sized for contour it's not too big and it's not too small it's just uh ideal for the contouring man for powder as well you saw even though it's a tightly packed brush it just applied the powder flawlessly it didn't look textured or overly powderly or powderly yeah <laughs> textured cakey at all it was it was absolutely perfect and the eyeshadow brush man this little guy can do a number of things for the eyes okay now yes i could have very well tried to use this brush as my transition application absolutely i prefer just to use my bigger crease brushes for my transition colors that's just me I could very well experiment with this using a transition color and see how that fares out. I'll report back to you on that. Loved how it applied my crease shade as well as my defining one. Loved how it applied the lower lash line. And I love how you can just, I mean, this is like, it's a shader diffuser brush. It's like, again, a, a MAC 217 type of deal. You could use it to place color onto the lid. You could use it to blend it out. You could turn it on its side. And because it's so soft, despite it being a little flat, the bristles move beautifully across the skin and it could, it'll make the eyeshadow move to where you want it to go okay and also i mean i feel the berries and cream eyeshadow palette is an excellent palette there's one shade in there that i'm not crazy about but again we get into that on another video as far as the shades that i love the eyeshadow i think is great and once you place it on there it just kind of blends itself but the brush i felt made it very easy to apply the shade on the lid it made it exceptionally easy to work it across the crease very easy to place it on the inner third and the crease looked diffused and beautiful if you're into really sharp looking eye looks you can use the tip of the brush to just create that baseline if you want a sharp v you can make that happen at a corner highlight i think it applied well brow bone you could even use this if you don't like a big fluffy brush to apply your highlighter you could use this brush to apply highlight on your nose even on the cupid's bow if you wanted you could probably use this brush to spot conceal with because these brushes 
I mean, I wouldn't use the powder brush on with creams because I just wouldn't have any use for that. But I would use this brush because you can use it with creams and liquids to spot treat with concealer for blemishes or just areas that need more concentrated placement of concealer. If you're not into concealer but you just use a little bit, you can use this brush to apply it on the inner corner of your eye instead of just all over under the eye. I probably, when editing this, I'll put the price up way in the beginning but this is $195 it is a limited edition set they are releasing the brushes again because they did postpone the actual rollout date that would come after the pre-sale if you're into brushes and you want to get two sets because you want to have one clean one and one that you use I get it I love brushes but I'm not I mean I want to be that hardcore but my budget's not that hardcore you know what I'm saying they are beautiful but they perform exceptionally well Chikuhoro is a household name in the brush world it's limited edition the design of these brushes are absolutely sublime gorgeous i mean look at this metallic blue look how beautiful it's a matte metallic too so it's not like shiny metallic it's a matte finish and the fuji design mount fuji design on these handles i mean come on are you kidding me this is a beautiful brush set Yes, it's expensive, and if you're not into spending money on brushes, then yes, please, just watch this video for fun and don't even think about buying this brush set. If you're into it and you're wondering how they perform, you will not be disappointed. I was not disappointed. This was my experience. Again, everyone is individual. If you used Chico Hodo brushes in the past and they weren't for you, then don't get this eye brush set, don't get Chico Hodo any. This is a collaboration, so again, you're gonna get Beauty Lish and Chico Hodo on the handle, on the design. You know, I'm not sure what role Beauty Lish had in this collaboration in terms of choosing what brushes they wanted in the set and how they wanted to be designed and what have you. I think this is solid set. It's only for brushes, but you can do so much with them. Multifunctional, multi-use, you can do your whole face with this. If you're not into elaborate eye looks like I am, you could just use one eyeshadow brush for your whole high look. <laughs> Transition shade, done. Lid, done. Lower lash line, done. Inner corner, done. Brow bow, done. You're done. Your mascara on and you're off. You're not into small foundation brushes, I get it. But this moves the product around quickly around the face. I think you'll be done quickly despite it being a smaller kabuki brush, but that's just me. I am so happy I got these brushes. They're my first Chico Hoda purchase. I know it's a collaboration with Beautylish, but listen, it inspires me. It motivates me to save up the coins to get more Chico Hoda brushes. Again, put your recommendations down below. I love to get more. And with that said, friends, that's a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another tutorial demo chit chat or review take care and i'll see you again soon